Hello! Welcome to this lesson on Death for Salesman by Arthur Miller. This is the second lesson in the English Literature course, and I'm hoping to use this lesson just to give a bit of background and context to the play before we start looking at actually what happens in the play. We can start off by looking at Arthur Miller, uh, move on to some ideas called realism and expressivism, then look at the politics and setting of the story, and finally look at it within the context of tragedy. Arthur Miller was born in 1915 and died in 2005. He was born in Harlem, which is a, very famously, a, an immigrant community in, in New York City. Uh, he worked as a warehouse to pay for his college tuition, and in between journalistic jobs, he worked on a shipyard with immigrants. Now, this is where I think a lot of his inspiration came from for his plays. So, he worked with mainly Italian-Americans, and he was subject to their hopes and dreams. He was able to try and figure out why they came to America and what they hoped to achieve. I think these key ideas are what you can see in Death of a Salesman. Um, and I think it's really important to consider that Arthur Miller isn't um, a person born without having to struggle for anything. He had to work really hard to go to college. And so you can see this reflected in his writing. Before I was rudely interrupted by um, an ice cream man, I was talking about the House on American Committee, which occurred during McCarthyism in America. And what this essentially meant was writers and artists in particular who were deemed to be supportive of left-wing ideals were pulled up in front of a tribunal and asked the question, are you or have you ever been a communist? Arthur Miller was, was put in front of HUAC um, and forced to answer for his political beliefs. He didn't rat out anyone, he didn't say anyone else was a communist. Um, but as a result of McCarthyism, some of his projects were cancelled, so some of his plays weren't um, allowed to have government funding. Arthur Miller then is, in my opinion, a left-wing writer. So he understands the issues with capitalism, uh, through his first-hand experience, of course, and therefore is able to write critically about them. Some of his plays include um, A View from a Bridge, A View from the Bridge, or The View from the Bridge, um, All My Sons, and of course, Death for Salesman. Next, we're going to look at realism and expressivism. These are two kinds of literary schools. Um, it's kind of like, um, say, modernism, postmodernism, that kind of thing. Um, realism, you get way back from the Victorian writers, so Dickens, um, those kind of guys. And the whole idea of realism is to express, through literature, the reality of life, to give um, such a description of something that you might as well be there looking at it. Um, it does not look too much on what goes inside a person, but rather uh, what goes on around them. The play was, interestingly, originally going to be titled The Inside of His Head. So this concept of realism I've just outlined isn't going to do too well by itself in looking at a play which, is which could have been titled The Inside of His Head. So that is where expressivism comes in. Expressivism is all about um, expressing someone's inner thoughts and emotions. This can be done um, for, for a variety of ways, but the way it's done in Death for Salesmen is by having people do things like walk through walls and through time travel, essentially. It attempts to show us what Willie Loman is reminiscing about, and uh, it's, it's key because in this play, um, realism and expressivism, they work together, and they, although in, in some sense they are conflicting schools, in this play they work together to create a play which shows not only the reality of things, but how Willie Loman, the main character, sees things. Uh, as I've said, people walking through walls is a good example of this, so st stage directions. Squalid conditions, um, and by this I don't mean the, the Kensian workhouse by any means, but uh, I'm trying to express the idea that 
uh, realism in this play normally refers to the realistic representation of cramped conditions, the realistic representation, say, of uh, real desires. It doesn't try to show us something particularly horrible, it just kind of shows us how things are and lets us take our own inferences from it. And finally, there is the role of memories. As I just said when I was talking about expressivism, uh, it allows us to represent memories. So instead of, say, um, Willie going off on a monologue and saying, well, I remember that time where Biff cleaned my car. We don't have that. It just shows us the memory. But in order for us to know it's a memory, we need to look to the stage directions. So memories very much rely on stage directions and they have such a profound effect on our viewing experience. We don't just look at a story as if it's happening in real life. We need to consider that within that story there's also memories and hopes and desires which only can be shown through expressivism. Next we're going to look at the politics and setting of Death of a Salesman. So it's post-war USA, post to during war. I like to think of this play as being set in 1946-ish, but the general idea is it's set during the 1940s. This play doesn't look at war. That's what All My Sons does. This does not consider war at all. What this considers is the period after the Second World War, which was the greatest period ever, aside from maybe the 1920s, for capitalism. There was, um, if you're interested in the history, if you're not, you could probably skip past this, but um, after the Second World War, America had stimulated so many economies in Europe, they could trade and they could um, uh, make money from so many different places. You had this awful, dismal economic state in the 1930s, and this moved to this economic boom in 1945 onwards. Unfortunately for Willie Loman, he doesn't get to experience this great economic boom. And that's what a lot of this story is about. It's about uh, the contrast between economic growth and the reality for working class people. New York City. Um, New York City is, is and always, well, is and has been for the last, say, 100 years, a melting pot for immigrants. You have those iconic images of Ellis Island and uh, immigrants coming in by the boatload uh, past the Statue of Liberty. It is a place full of hopes and dreams and that's why it makes it such a great place for this, uh, for this story to take place. The converse rise of communism. I think, and this is maybe because I understand communist history, but I think it's worth considering that death for salesmen occurs in a time where a communist country, the Soviet Union, has essentially won the Second World War. You have these two economic powerhouses right up against each other. And so I think, to some extent, Miller is showing us what America is actually like. He doesn't show us what the Soviet Union is actually like, but I think at the time we can kind of infer... Um, a, a difference between the two systems. But what I'm trying to say is that at this point, more than any other point in history, there is an alternative for people to, to capitalism. We also can look at mental illness through the lens of death for salesmen. And I think this is something that people, myself included, didn't really consider when they watched, uh, when they read the play for the first time. Mental illness, since about 20 years ago, if that, has been criminally neglected by uh, the healthcare services. It isn't considered at all, uh, especially after wartime, you had people with PTSD um, or, or shell shock or, or whatever. Um, mental illness was, was not seen as a problem, it was seen as a weakness. And um, Willie Loman is undoubtedly mentally ill, so this is something we, we should consider when we read the play. Last two, sports and culture. So a, a large part of this um, story is about sports and the hope that that provides. Now, 
if you're an English person, which I assume if you're watching this video, you are, you see sports as well, um, a really important part of society. But in America, sports has this different role in culture. It is so interlinked with education that if you were good at sports, it is assumed that you will then get um, a scholarship to a university and then nine times out of ten you won't become a professional but you would have gone into university. Sports isn't seen there as just the pastime, especially for young people. It's seen as a route to prosperity in future life. Um, also within the context of a capitalist society, politics um, plays a role in that because sports encourages competitiveness and competitiveness is vital in a capitalist economy. Finally, we can look at higher purchase and consumerism. Higher purchase um, is it, still a, a term used today sometimes, but it's um, not, as, not used as commonly. It's um, the idea of just putting down a deposit for something um, and paying it back monthly. It's, it's not something very extreme or anything, but I think it plays a, a very large part in the play because it's all about buying things that we probably don't really need um, and then suffering because we can't pay back for them. Finally, we're going to look at this play in the concept, con context of a tragedy because it is a, a tragedy. It is not, in my opinion, I, I think the opinion of, of many people who read the play, it is not an Aristotelian tragedy. It completely goes against Aristotle's notions of tragedy. Willie Noman, and in fact Biff Lohman, and in fact Happy, and practically every other character in the play is not a great person at all. By no means, they're all deeply flawed. They, are, they haven't really achieved much in their life. And so right off from the bat, we've not got a tragic hero, in my opinion. This is a play in two acts, which completely goes against Aristotle's idea of a beginning, middle and end. I'm not saying that this play doesn't have a beginning, middle and end, but it, um, it's not a five-act play where you have the beginning and the first, the end and the fifth, and the, the middle and the third. Or a three-act play where obviously you have a beginning, middle, end right after each other. It's much more... Um, the, the boundary between beginning, middle and end is much more unclear, and this was something that Aristotle probably wouldn't have approved of. There's also, at the end of this play, a distinct lack of catharsis, in my opinion. Um, you don't get this, this sense of catharsis. Uh, once we look at what happens in the play, I'll allude a bit more to what I'm on about. And finally, mental illness. Our main character is weak because um, of mental illness which has not been treated. Uh, this is the anti-Aristotelian tragedy in my opinion, primarily because it depicts a character who cannot uh, and quite frankly doesn't want to fight the things which are hurting him. Um, it's a play about a dismal state of affairs and I don't think I don't think it makes us look within ourselves it, it doesn't talk about human nature as much as I think some other tragedies do but it makes us look around us and it makes us question whether or not we're in a system which benefits us it isn't a propaganda play by any means and that's something we're going to look at and in the later videos I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to give ideas. So I don't want to say, well, this is what this means. Because that's the death of literature. Literature is not about someone telling you what something means. It's about you kind of coming up with your own ideas. And plus, um, I find it really boring. Uh, a, a great example of, of this is um, in Of Mice and Men. Everybody writes that Curly's wife has no name because it's just something which has meaning because people and teachers say it has meaning but there are far more interesting things that people can have a go at in that in that book and i think the same goes for all of the texts we're going to study here um my goal for the next few videos is essentially to uh, let you make your own ideas i'm trying to give you what the story is about and then give you the kind of context and stuff which you would need to make your own um, uh, very insightful ideas. Um, I hope you enjoy this, I hope it was useful, and I hope I see you again next time.